Welcome to another exciting lesson in trying to win your fantasy football drafts. This is the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. Uh, we are at lesson 48. Oh my goodness. And we are continuing our team focus uh, for 16 lessons here. And uh, please go back and see the other two just so you can get a feel for how I'm approaching this and the depth that I'm going, my landscape process that I've explained multiple times. Uh, team focus, Carolina and Chicago. Things are changing. Things are staying the same. Let's see what is going on here. Uh, let's move to the... NFC South, that's the conference. There's the team, Carolina, position, quarterback, running back, tied in, and wide receiver, 2016 to 2020. What you see is fantasy point averages <laughs> for uh, each position. And uh, I've circled in blue the top in the last five years, just so you see, you know, what's going on recently versus a long time ago. And uh, I, at the end, we have the grand total. And you can kind of get a feel for what positions have been uh, producing more fantasy points. Usually wide receivers do quite well. And that is the case here, and uh, running backs. So Carolina has traditionally relied on uh, running backs and wide receivers, and probably more pass-catching running backs. Uh, CMC, and his 2019 was a top at 521. Uh, so, but last year he got hurt, so notice we dropped back down to, uh, you know, lowest in the last four years. So one would easily predict we're going back, going up, having him back, and uh, hopefully doing some pass catching. Wide receivers uh, really took an uptick because... Uh, he wasn't there, and uh, that kind of aided them. If he's back, do we probably see a regression back towards 19 or 18 levels? Probably. So I think if you're trying to use 2020, you're, the, the metrics are probably overstating the case for Carolina wide receivers. Please kind of keep that in mind for your drafts this summer. Uh, Quarterback-wise, we haven't had a good quarterback uh, since 2018, Cam Newton. And we've struggled in the last two years. Uh, been some, uh, the last uh, uh, two years have been the lowest in five, last five. So what do we get this year? And... How would that affect us? Uh, the tight ends were almost non-existent. Uh, Five-year low, uh, it's like Carolina just waved the flag, says we won't use our tight ends. So uh, they had had a good tight end since um, 2016. So I'm approaching it as the data would lean that I will not myself look at uh, certainly need my tight end ones, maybe a tight end three, just on a good, you know, spot situation, good, good matchup, maybe, maybe, probably not though, on my redraft teams. Okay, so let's continue. And so this shows a graphical view of 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20, and the last column is 20. And so you can kind of, as I exit here, you can kind of see pretty much what the numbers told us. Uh, quarterback has declined, okay. Uh, CMC got hurt, 
so we saw this. So uh, I think we're going back to this level with the caveat that, uh, you know, what kind of quarterback are we going to have? What's the, you know, are we overestimating CMC at one? Uh, I think there's more uncertainty this year with some injury issues and the quarterback issues. Uh, I think if you take him at one, there's some uncertainty. Tight end, we're giving up as the Carolina has given up. Wide receivers really jumped up last year in response to losing CMC. We're probably closer to this area here. So we see a regression of the wide receivers and an uptick in the rushing, pass catching CMC coming back. Uh, the good news for him is I do think that wide receivers showed that they will be a force as some good, you know, games, certainly uh, home games, and that should allow CMC to uh, collect, and his uh, presence will confound the defense and might let some wide receivers uh, collect points. So hopefully ping-pong in between the, the situation will help you if you uh, invest in the running backs or the wide receivers here. Uh, positional usage, I like part of my process, just see how the teams use. So I, I took the five-year totals and uh, figured out the total total, right? And then did a percentage of each position and Pretty much what you might predict, wide receivers have gotten 37, almost uh, 38% tight ends. Uh, <laughs> who? Tight ends here. And then running backs have done well. The quarterback in the old days is doing well. 2020 noticed that declined. And even CMC, we really did see much of a drop, 3% of usage. But look at the wide receivers. We completely gave up on the tight end and all those uh, points went here and some of these points went there. And again, um, these two inflows to the wide receivers, I don't think we're going to see as much here. But we did see a 11% uh, increase. Of course, the tight end declined and uh, running backs to climb. So how does uh, the public look? Here's just kind of some recent mid-bay look at Carolina, the quarterbacks, so running backs and wide receiver just gave up on the tight end here. Uh, overall uh, numbers and probably to me, I like to look at the round. So Sam Darnold is predicted to be the quarterback. Uh, predicted, you never know, 14th round. Uh, it's not a real strong uh, endorsement. So with that's the case, uh, notice that Moore and Anderson are six and eight. Given Sam Darnold, given CMC expected uh, regression, I think I will take Anderson cheaper than Moore. Yes, if Moore drops to seven, and then he would be on my target. I'm not sure I want to pay a six for him. CMC is the top dog. Uh, I think there's some uncertainty here. And Chubba Hubba here, Chubba Hubbard. Uh, 12th round, uh, yeah, I guess if I, when redrafts, had this, then I guess you might consider... Uh, a hand, uh, you know, a uh, handcuff, but I, I don't know if they're not better handcuffs out there. So I'm not sure how I would uh, view that. But anyway, that's the numbers. Uh, more than Anderson, I think the public is concerned. I think they dropped down a little bit 
even they had good years last year. So I'm kind of thinking I will look for bargains there, but won't hesitate to take them at a at a at a bargain at seven and nine rounds versus six and eight. That would be nice. I'm not sure I'm taking Sam Darnold. Okay, maybe he's in a super flex. I guess he's got a throw to somebody concept. Okay. So there is that. Let's look at, um, and I forgot to, to do this. This is the difference here, and I drew the blue line. So anything below the blue line shows a negative difference from 2020 to the five-year average, and we see that the wide receivers were the only ones that increased. But again, I believe that could be tied to CMC being hurt. Tight ends, let's give it up. Quarterbacks decline, and I'm not sure what Darnold's going to bring to the table. Uh, I would be cautious about drafting him. Okay, uh, nothing really more to gain here. Just I like to look visually and just consider and think. Okay, so I... I suspect we will move on then to Chicago, NFC North, Chicago, uh, quarterback, running back, tight end, wide receiver. The grand totals, I think, much like Carolina, the running back and the wide receivers. Uh, they're a little closer than Carolina is a little bit more skewed to the running back. Chicago does like to run, however, they haven't really had a great season until 2018. Uh, 2020 was okay, but it wasn't spectacular. Uh, you know, the quarterback didn't do too bad, right? It's uh, number two out of five. So I think there is some hope. And I think the wide receivers may be getting some of that. And you assume that things are going to gel and... I think we might have some bargains. Uh, the tight end had a spectacular year, that crew, at 219. So Chicago tight ends, maybe, I think, with uh, Cole Kimmett. I think we're on the board for a late surprise tight end to spot play play there. So there's... Uh, these guys, I think uh, uh, the wide receivers and the tight ends have a spectacular year. We had a little bit of decline in the running back, but not so dramatic. But still, there's been better years at running back in Chicago. So it wasn't bad. Uh, looking at the patterns here, here's the quarterback, kind of an uptick, but really a down from that year, but an up from five years. So there's some conflicting data what we're getting. Hopefully we will stay in that area. Uh, running backs have been kind of steady. So one might assume that's what we'll get. And tight ends popped up. That was a surprise. So I think there you might get a bargain or two here. Keep your eyes open. And uh, wide receivers, of course, 2016 was the golden age, but uh, last year wasn't so bad. So I think uh, if we stay in that range, that will be, you know, good for us to draft a, uh, a wide receiver. So I guess I'm more confident, if I could say that, on some of the plays here versus Carolina, and we talked about that. Uh, here's the five positional usages. Uh, I think the wide receivers over five years and the running backs have been the show. Last year, we saw a 4% decline in running back and an increase in the tight end. And the quarterback pretty much stayed the same. So I guess I don't expect any usage to go up on the quarterback. Hard to see if the running backs do any better than they did last year. And we, again, surprise tight end and I think wide receiver or steady. So I think a lot of Chicago is going to be more steady than not. 
We have Justin Fields as our quarterback. He's going in round 13. I just don't know what we're going to get out of him. That's the only concern I have. Uh, and it could hurt the value. And it could theoretically uh, increase the value then of the RBs. So I did rank Montgomery. Cohen and, and Williams there, 3, 10, and 12 rounds. I think Montgomery, I think if you're willing to gamble, he's a good play. He might be a good price at almost four. So I'm not turning him away. Uh, uh, his price seems fair with some of the potential uptick, especially early in the season. You would expect they might rush a little more. Cohen's a good pass-catching one. I just don't know how that plays, so I think I would wait, try to get around 11 in Williams, 13-14. Uh, Kimmett is round 14. That might be a surprise. He might be worth a pickup as a late tight end, too. Certainly in best ball, I would not shy away from him as a two or three, not a one, but a two or three. Robinson, round three, four, that seems reasonable given the quarterback situation. If there was a journeyman quarterback, I think uh, that round number, that he would be closer to the beginning of round three. So I think that's fine. Mooney, uh, I'm underwhelmed. Uh, by him, I think I'll wait for any kind of bargain. I think I'll take Robinson at the fourth round. Late three seems right, and Montgomery seems right. So I think I'm hoping, so I'm gambling that Fields uh, does better by the end of the season. There may be some rough patches. In redrafts, it could be very possible that if Fields has some issues or whoever, if Fields is not ready, that might open the door for some people disappointed, say in Robinson. You might be able to uh, pick those up, you know, early. So don't miss that opportunity, I don't think. I would be watching for that. Okay, uh, let's see, I hit the button. Okay, here we go. So zero is kind of an uptick. Uh, decline here, that always is a worrisome here. Tight end went up, so Kemet could be a play. About the same. So I think steady, probably steady. This to me is the question mark here a question mark so I think I've said what I need to say it's just nice to kind of see make sure I'm not forgetting anything uh, by the way I don't have a screw up I'm actually I don't know when I created this data a month ago and so uh, I'm responding as I would respond when I scan through so I'm not I don't have any script I just talk as most professors do out of their mouth. There I am. Okay, uh, I think we're done. Yes, we are. Uh, okay, hope you enjoyed Carolina Chicago, our kind of our team level uh, view, getting a little deeper to the player level, at least the beginning. There's some lots of other things to and lessons to worry about and think about, but there's the initial view of the uh, Chicago. So watch for injuries and other kinds of information coming out. But I think you got the message that I'm at least in my head right now for Carolina and uh, Chicago. Okay, come back. The process continues. Uh, come back.